Now, here's your hosts, The League Dad, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. What's up, gamers, and welcome to another episode of the All In Podcast. I am the League Dad, and I am back when it feels like it's been forever because I missed last episode uh, because I was down with the coronavirus, unfortunately. Thank you guys for holding it down. It was an awesome episode. Uh, and then we have a break, right, from LCS. So uh, we're doing this episode a little bit off schedule because we had some time in between. Uh, so we're here to catch up on everything and see how things will go moving forward, give our thoughts on all of that. But before we do all of that, of course, I got to introduce my buddies and my awesome co-hosts. Uh, first up, we have Kevin. Kevin, how are you? How was uh, your weekend? How has the break been? And uh, what you been up to, man? The break was fine. The LCS weekend, not that great for me as a Liquid <laughs> fan. But, you know, it wasn't the worst. Uh, we still went one and one. Uh, on my company, however, one of my coworkers who's been, like, basically we're on the same team. It's just us two on the team. Uh, at my level is leaving uh, this week. So that mm. means I'm going to be a lot busier <laughs> going forward. So that'll be fun. Uh, you know, it's funny because when you said my team, the first thing I thought about was like, your work has a uh, LOL league <laughs> team. I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> I was like, who are the only two hey, people? I mean, team? every okay. time you queue up, that is work, man. That's, that's hard right. work. Yeah, I forgot. I mean, that is adulting. Uh, you were actually talking about work, so good for you. But that sucks, man. It's going to be a lot of work. Uh, but hopefully... Uh, won't be too bad uh all right mitchell how are you doing my friend i know you've got the little rona myself yourself too so how, how you been man i'm sorry you got it too yeah you gave it to me league dead what the hell cross country <laughs> we did it <laughs> we did Over it the internet yeah um i've been obviously feeling better i got covid um but i mean i went to anime expo last weekend and mm-hmm. that's where i got it and that was yeah. really fun so i mean it's like I like, you know, was it worth it or not? I mean, I had a lot of fun, but um, saw some cool stuff, a lot of anime, a lot of Arcane and League of Legends cosplays. Oh my god, they were everywhere. In fact, really? I have a little surprise. I got this sick ass poster of a collie. Nice. Really cool. nice. Um, and it was not that expensive. It was only twenty bucks, and it was pretty nicely done. So yeah, it was a good time. Did um, you cosplay? But- I did. I went as a really, really bad Naruto <laughs> cosplay. <laughs> it was literally, I got this little jacket. I had orange mm-hmm. shorts and um, and a headband that kept falling off. So I just wore it around my arm and that there was it. Um, That's it, man. But I got recognized, so it was pretty fun. It was cool. Um, next time, I think I might do a like a Lee Sin cosplay if I can get ripped enough. You know, yeah, fun. there you go. That's it, man. <laughs> That's the goal. Yeah, I, that sounds fun. Uh, I, I need to get into Naruto. I haven't seen it, but my son has a... Uh, he loves <laughs> Naruto. it. Naruto. Naruto. Apologies. Uh, Naruto. Uh, but he has a... Uh, he actually has a ramen bowl that's a, a Naruto ramen bowl. I was like, that's pretty oh, sick. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm gonna try to catch up on it because I heard it's really good. But that's awesome, man. I'm glad you're back safe. I uh, hope you get well soon. Alistair, how are you? I see you're in uh, back at home in Canada. Uh, I think you're on break, right? But let us know what's going on with you, man. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, a bit tired. Uh, been pretty chill since I've been back. Finally got a job. Uh, nice. Solo nice. Q's been good. Show us the shirt. Show the shirt. <laughs> Show the it's jacket. So cool, man. I don't know why Alistair is always so secretive. He's like the most decorated <laughs> league player in this podcast. Okay, it's for you listeners. so cool. For you listeners out there, he is uh, holding up a jacket. Uh, go ahead, Alistair, describe that jacket for us. So this is the jacket that Riot made me for uh, Collegiate League of Legends when we went out to LA. That is awesome, so. man. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I am. Um, I, I, if we're gonna make it into the LCS, guys, Alistair is our ticket. Okay, so Alistair, everybody on man. this, sh- everybody who's a supporter of the show, if you want us to make it big time, let's all support Alistair in his journey to becoming a CLG, CLG pro. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> let's go. I am ready for this, but that, dude, I really am uh proud of you man i know i'm like way older than you and that sounds like a dad moment but uh yeah i'm proud of you man <laughs> keep it up uh by the way how ha- uh, let's talk about that real quick before we jump into stuff solo queue because you know i've actually you know i'm not great or anything but i've recently been going on a huge win streak playing nothing mm-hmm. but senna and renata <laughs> 
and it God. is fun. I know yeah, Mitchell shaking his head at me, but I am. I just love destroying people, and I have like an eighty percent win rate in my last fifteen games. Uh, I think I'm. I think Which I'm fine. Play as the center or the Renata. Uh, I've done both. I like playing Renetta, oh Renata God. and Renata. I, I have like a hundred, I kid you not. Uh, I have a hundred percent win rate on Renata over two accounts. Uh, the thing is I find Renata what? kind of boring, uh, not really boring, but Senna is just more fun to play. Cause you just kill people all the time. Like, and it's just, they can't do anything. And so I love playing mm. Senna and I actually feel like without trying to be too biased, I feel like I'm actually playing well as Senna. Uh, which is why I think I've gotten better because I played center before, but I know she's broken. But I'm also think I'm I'm dodging a lot of stuff, playing better. I feel like my macros on point. Like I just feel like I have a quote unquote formula for how to snowball early game and get a win. So, but what about you guys? I want to. I'm interested to hear a ram champs you've been trying or anything in solo <laughs> queue or what what you've been enjoying about the game so far or lately. Uh, yeah, for me on a ram, I so there are challenges in the game. I've mm -hmm. hit 99 DPS threats. So I hit challenger tier on DPS threat, which is an achievement where you do wow. 1800 DPM or something like that. Wow. Uh, so that's my, I guess, a ram achievement. However, I will say, as far as like broken stuff on a ram goes, it, it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, I, I don't think anything's like, okay, no, that's not true. There's a couple of things that are giga broken, yeah. but if they've been broken for a while, Azari was broken for a while until the nerf. I think she's okay. And then the poke characters are still really annoying. Like Ash, uh, there was during this time between our podcast, there was a game in LCK, I believe, that they also played support Ash mm. with like the ARAM build and everything. Yeah, it was and Teddy. I so, yeah, it won. They, yeah, they they won with it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. ARAM taking I, over. I'm baby. sorry to say, I think ARAM builds are like generally usable as long as you have. And coordinated play. I don't think they're usable in solo queue. You're going to get crushed before you get to that point. Right. Okay. Uh, Alistair, anything new? And uh, I, I see you've hit Grandmaster. Is that is that what what I saw? I mean, I, one of these days, I'm just going to hover over his name. It's going to say Challenger Rank 1. Uh, but mm -hmm. seriously, man, uh, what, have you been, what have you been liking on, uh, on Rank so far? Um, honestly, I've just kind of been playing whatever I feel like I need to carry. I mean, usually that's Vayne, Kaisa, Twitch uh ezreal for sure uh those are the ones uh, some zeri as well um mm. i've actually had to lose a lot of lp from dodging because a lot of people decide to play ash support or senna support and uh. they <laughs> run it down every single time wait senna I... support runs it down too really yes oh, yeah. no I, support players can't play senna most of the time no i you know but and like, i realize this people, yeah when people know how to play the game and play bot lane the support players cannot play senna they yeah, has the freest landing phase of any support in the game or any like hard scaling champ, and they will just manage to die seven times. And yeah, that's that's I was gonna say that because when when I was first playing Senna, that's exactly what I did, and that's where I think I've actually changed the 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 coin is that I because you just get so aggro early on uh, without realizing like you have to play it right, you have to space. It's like short trades, not long trades, and it's kind of figuring out that that balance. And so I was I was laughing when you said that because I feel like that's exactly how I played setup for a while. So I think I yeah, turned the exactly. corner. I I just have to dodge it because I just mm. don't trust it. Like they'll alt for <laughs> kills for some reason. They'll <laughs> use their Q, but they'll only use Q for damage. They'll never use yeah. it for heal. They'll Healing. never use oh, it yeah. well. The, for some reason, they'll take airy instead of fleet, and yeah, what? I, I don't know. I've seen guardian senna, locket senna's trash. Don't ever build that. Don't, don't do it. What no you're more. thinking? If you're yeah. gonna play senna, don't build support items. If you want to build support items, play an actual support. Yes. Yeah. Well, I you agree. can build umbral glaive, I think, and that's no. What that's I what I build. I build umbral glaive, and that's a really no, that, good that's item. That's what you're supposed to build. Yeah. I, I just mean like building like locket and redemption, like. I don't know what you're yeah. doing. I, I think uh, the Locket Senna was uh, was pretty trending a while back when Locket was super broken. It, yeah. it gave mm -hmm. like five uh, armor MR passively and had better stats, I think. So, and Senna was not nerfed yet, I think. So there, there was I mean, a time Senna's when best I build, but that just shows the Senna's not good. Mm -hmm. If you want yeah. to, if you want to abuse Locket, just pick a better champion. That's like, right. Like, a champion that uses it better. Yep. I well, it, it well, yeah. I mean, situationally, I thought it was uh, actually pretty good back then. I haven't, I haven't seen it at all since since it's the, been nerfed so many times. Though. The locket, it's yeah. like why? Yeah. So yeah. I, I don't know if it's, it's 
probably not good anymore. I just have never seen it since last year. But uh, I have uh, lost every single game I've played. <laughs> COVID, so. <laughs> oh, all right, man. give us advice on what to play. All right, let's go. Uh, what do I not, not play here? <laughs> I mean, I've been playing a lot of Aurelia, so maybe that's why. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, you were so trying to learn Aurelia. Last time we played, you were like, I'm going to try to get good at Aurelia, but that's, that's interesting. <laughs> I guess it's yeah, not going well. I lost all my Aaron games I played with Kevin. We played like five in a row. We lost all of them. <laughs> all right, those were tragic. Some of those, okay? Like we we weren't like actually that bad. I think. Yeah. Right. It was just, just hard. We just got AFKs and really bad drafts. Mm. But um, and then I played uh, some normal games and I played one solo queue game, all Aurelia on my alts and I lost all of them. It was rough. Um, mm. I I still I can, I'm good at her combos sort of but um man I cannot carry it's so hard. <laughs> yeah. I just I just end up jumping in. I'm like. Oh, I just died. Damn. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I'm waiting to not get sick so I can actually get better at her. Um, you could just blame it on really your sickness. <laughs> just yeah, I'm blaming it on my sickness. <laughs> yeah. I am. She is like, I think she has so many build options right now because like, yeah. she. I think she's pretty strong if you can um, get like an okay matchup and not get camped. Like, yeah. Um, this one build that was popular on Viego was the um, Blade of the Rune King Frostfire build. I actually think that build is pretty good on Aurelia if you, like, are just afraid of getting one shot and burst before you can do all your hoop shoop shoop stuff. So yeah. you can consider that Frostfire, um, Blade of the Rune King on Aurelia. It's not our best build. It's, it's a situational build, but it's yeah. fun. Cool, man. Well, it sounds like you guys have uh, all been finding new things. <laughs> some of us having good times and some of us not so good times. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's why we play League. I guess it's those ups and downs that keeps us going, keeps us hooked. But um, all right, let's talk about some LCS. Uh, you know, it's been a week since uh, the games happened. Uh, and I know some of us had to recap uh, <laughs> what happened, especially because <laughs> my memory was lost. But uh, we'll just start right up top. You know, uh, EG is number one right now, right? Uh, they were the defending champs. Um, they went 2-0 and this week, uh, beating TSM and Golden Guardians. Uh, I mean, what are your thoughts on this team right now? I honestly, you know, I am surprised in a sense that they're doing well because they were in MSI. We always hear the MSI slump. I honestly thought we'd see that. And I think their, their time so far has not been perfect, but I think they've been pretty good. Uh, I think Danny especially is playing well, inspired, playing amazing uh jojo still being jojo you know i really do think that this team is just good i think they've just got better uh since msi and what i thought was going to happen this split like in the last split where they were kind of questionable during the regular season uh they're doing well and i hope that doesn't go away i hope that their kind of slump doesn't happen like later on you know what i mean like i i hope this is them just genuinely getting better um i did hear i think it was on the dive somebody was interviewing danny and they said you know why are you performing so well? He attributed part of it to him not playing as much uh, because, you know, he was getting criticism for uh, not grinding champions queue. Right. And he he was kind of getting flamed for his response of like, well, I just like to relax and play solo queue with friends or play what I want with no pressure. And whatever he's doing, I think he's he's living proof that it doesn't always have to be a grind fest in order to get better. Because he, I feel like, is improving slightly, you know, doing, playing well for his team, being what he needs to be. And if his method of getting better is by kind of decompressing, by playing things he doesn't really, you know, is, is not going to be super high pressure, then, you know, I'm, I'm happy for him. So overall, I think EG's doing great. Um, you know, they, they've they played Cloud9 uh, and 100 Thieves, and they both, they won both those games. So it's not like they're just beating easy teams. They, they have played... Pretty tough team. So let me get your thoughts on EG uh, up to this point so far. And if you think this is going to continue, this trend of them just winning. Yeah, I mean, my thoughts on EG are, again, I'm surprised too. We, we already went through, like, yeah, they should have a slump. But, like, they've been able to keep their form for a while now. They did lose to CLG, but that's it. Um, I will say that for Danny's case, I don't think it's a question of, like, him having less practice being the path towards success or something. I think it's probably that he had the raw mechanics and the thing that was keeping him back was either synergy with his support or his ability to just like keep his mental in games. Um, right. So if you take, if you have the hands, but you, you know, can keep your, and your mental is your issue, then yeah, taking a break or taking a breather is totally fine. Like we right. had players who, you know, like have just, been mentally blocked like every time double plays against uzi it's not like he doesn't have the hands to at least like play the game right yeah it's more like it's a mental thing um i will say that their landing phase is still like 
an issue. And sure. I would really not want to see them against some of those bot lanes out there, like against Ruler, against all the LPL bot lanes. Like it just feels like it would not be a great matchup for our currently best team. But I, I'm happy that they've been improving and I'm happy they didn't, they're not slumping yet. But we've seen our number one team slump in summer halfway through, like split over split over split recently, usually C9. So, you know, mm. let's hope they don't fall into the multiple different narratives that always play out in LCS. True. Yeah, I think they've definitely done well, but I'm I'm still waiting for one of those storylines that Kelvin's talking about. I mean, yeah. I'm always skeptical it, about this kind of thing. It's inevitable, kind of isn't it? It it feels that way. Um, honestly, the looking a bit ahead, I'm I'm really excited to see them play TL. I think that's going to be very telling because um, they they have already beaten Hundred Thieves, I believe. Their own, or was that their only loss? I can't remember. No, no they, they lost to CLG. Yeah, CLG. Of okay, all teams. Right, they lost to CLG. Yeah, and they uh, did okay. be 100 teams, but it was week once, 100 Thieves. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't have add much to add. I think Kevin kind of just said pretty much what I wanted to say. So. Okay. Uh, one thing I will say, I don't know, two Canadians, just better. I don't know. No! <laughs> just, just better players. The CA, the, the Canada yeah, not versus... Not much to say, just throwing, throwing it in there. Yeah. <laughs> nice. True. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, EG is definitely the best team. They like, they do feel like they're not even trying that hard sometimes, mm-hmm. and they still win. Like, it, it feels like they're kind of they're playing pretty loose, and yeah, they're just better. Um, it definitely felt like that that was the same thing in uh, spring finals and spring semis and stuff. They're playing really loose and still winning. So, um, if they ever lock it down even tighter, and um, I think. Either the JLXP or I watched an interview. They were saying that like they desperately needed this week break, and that this is going to be their thing that prevents them from doing that that typical first place slump. I could see that, um, yeah, because they didn't have it. They didn't have much time, right? They like went to MSI. They took a break. They scrimmed for like a few days before the start of the split, and it's just been on since then. So taking like another week or two break um, could be really good for them. And when a team is just better. I mean, yeah, maybe practicing less and playing less is fine because, like, you just need that break. Like, you are better. All you have, your biggest enemy is actually yourself, not your opponents. So I really yeah. like that. Um, this team is smart. Um, I will say that that draft against Golden Guardians was actually the most awesome, fun thing ever. <laughs> yeah, I was good. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like watching that the first time, I was like, "This is amazing!" And then I rewatched the highlights right before the show, and I was like, "Oh yeah, this, this was a sick game." Um, yeah. That 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 B five uh, came pick was just so good. Um, that champion is just not balanced at all. Like, if you can, uh, okay, it's really hard to get his form in pro play. You could tell how many times inspired gank top lane, and it still took him like sixteen or seventeen minutes to get form. Mm-hmm. That's quite a long mm-hmm. time, actually. Yeah, it's a long time. Uh, in solo queue, you can get it like maybe like. I don't know, 14, 13, 15, if you Free just turn a gank yeah. like that. Um, so that was it. But once you do get that form, like, that champion is just nowhere close to okay balance. Like, especially with Seraphine and whatever stuff uh, they had in that game. Um, I also actually really liked Golden Guardian's draft. It was kind of funny. Zach is he also didn't have You didn't champion. even have Death Stance, by the way. I just want to point that out. It's yeah, he did not. He had he, he had a uh, gore drinker, he had frozen heart instead, frozen heart. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't have <laughs> um, so that's not balanced at all. No. Uh, let's be honest, guys. Uh, that's not fair. Um, but I mean, good for them, right? It's they took advantage of it. Um, I mm-hmm. would like to see more of that, right? Because we see a lot of blind sage running tops with that don't take flash. That's a really free way to stack um orbs on Kane, so for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, EG just looks like they play the best, they're the loosest, they practice the least, so they give away the less stuff, mm-hmm. and they have some of the most unique drafts. Like, what more do you want from a team? Like, yeah. that's your best. So, um, pretty exciting stuff from EG. Yeah, that's, uh, it is, again, like, really a testament to, they, they've kind of have this, um, I want to say like culture or character around this team, like the team culture is there. Like, yeah, like they play loose. I like how you said like, they, Hey, look, people like Danny, they, they take breaks because it's better for them. It's like their style seems a little bit different than what we've typically heard the mantra to getting better should be right. Like, because Koreans, they're the types that 
grind, even try, you know, in, in LPL, like they grind all day. And the way they get better is by playing more hours than you have. Right. And that's just how they get better. But um, I, it's nice to see a team still do well, but take a different approach because it shows different types of philosophies. And um, yeah, so I, I really think that this is really good for them. Honestly, I also like seeing Danny play Seraphine because that was a different kind of look. And then we had uh, Vulcan on Gragas that game. Like like you said, the drafts, very interesting. But also, uh, it's interesting to see Danny take a different kind of role, right? He doesn't necessarily have to scale with a hyper carry. He could just scale with an enchanter support, right? And and do yeah. his thing. So um, very interesting uh, to see. But um, anything on, on EG before we move on uh, to the next teams? Yeah, last thing I wanted to mention is like they also have that quality that's pretty rare in NA teams where like you do just feel like hey when they're behind there's always a chance yeah like it's it's what we attribute to like SKT or RNG or whatever like these yeah. like legacy orgs who make crazy comebacks right like EG just does it like they go down 4k maybe even a soul and it's like they'll team fight their way through and it'll look great and that's that's a good quality to have that is something yeah. that we need at Worlds it's not and to clarify it's not like 100 Thieves where they wait for you to make a mistake EG is correct like yeah. it always looks like they know at least they know what they want to do. Whether they execute or not it doesn't always happen, but they do it a lot more often than a lot of teams. Like, they have a plan, and they usually make it happen. They don't just rely on you to be bad and be NA to, to, to make it happen. So yeah. I, I really like that quality. It makes it so much more fun to watch their games because it's never over, over, even if they're, like, really far behind. Which some teams, it just feels like if, if 100 Thieves fall really far behind against a good team, it's just it's, it's over. Yeah, yeah, I think also, like... Well, you said that you, you compared it to some really good teams, right? Like 100 Thieves, yeah. um, like championship teams, a, a T1, you know, like the, these ty- types of teams where you never think they're out. Like that's a good sign for EG when you have that quality because it means you're on that caliber where people can't count you out because they know that you are just going to find your way back in the game. And so I really like that uh, you mentioned that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they they gave uh, Impact's first win against T1 ever against SKT. So, right, I mean, that's right. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty special. That's like true. I, like I was, was like C9 and Liquid for so long. <laughs> they never <laughs> beat <Yeah>. SKT. <laughs> they didn't ever. always play. To be fair, like it was uh, for the longest time it was Dom one coming to Worlds and stuff. Yeah, but that's still a lot of years though. <laughs> like that's right. a long time. Uh, right. Also, um, <laughs> I mean, they're they're really creative with like their comps, but also their builds. Uh, Danny was the the ARAM connoisseur, he brought out the uh, MF with uh, Leandri's tech, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. and then it's a full lethality. So the ultimate poke build, that is just absolutely the most AIDS build on ARAM. I hate it. Yeah, I hate and it. It's it's so it's so strong in the right comp, and he pulled it off. Uh, I yeah. think he's built it twice now. So I really like that this team is very, I mean, they're just willing to like try stuff that like other people aren't trying that's actually good. So they must I mean, play a lot of they don't play it in solo queue. They oh, must yeah. play, play it in ARAM. Q. They must play it in ARAM or something. Maybe on their time off yeah. instead of grinding solo queue, they're playing ARAM, ARAM together. It's okay in competitive. The build works in competitive. In right. solo queue, you are actively into your game if you're building this. Yeah. <laughs> Full stop. Uh, yeah. No, don't I agree. MF support. <laughs> I mean, I no no, I'm I agree. Dodging. <laughs> Allison, you make a, you make a lot of sense though because uh, again, like against this, you know, in this particular game that he's playing MF with us, Leandres, it makes sense, right? Like it actually, the build fits into what they're trying to do, and I so I agree. Like in competitive, where you have planning behind it and a reasoning behind it, as opposed to like I just want to burn the crap out of people and like take half their health with one E, then you know it's a little bit different, right? So I, I do I do agree with that where it's a different circumstance. Uh, let's go to 100 Thieves. And, you know, they played Team Liquid, which I think was the matchup of the weekend. Unfortunately for me and Kevin, our team did not win. That had to be one of the most boring games I've seen this split uh, for the first, I don't know, 20 minutes or whatever. These two teams, are I was like snoozing. Uh, but 100 Thieves here, they end up, you know, in second place. Uh, along with Team Liquid. Uh, so what are your thoughts on them? Because this is a team like I, you can't really pinpoint because sometimes they're good, sometimes they're terrible. Um, this week they happen to beat Team Liquid and uh, IMT, which IMT is terrible. So Team Liquid, they win. But what are your thoughts on 100 Thieves? Give me your uh, just consensus at this point because I, I still have a hard time. They're in second, but I'm like, I don't know. Am I impressed though? I don't, I don't really know. They, they, they picked a comp from last season. Or last mm-hmm. split. Like, they just picked the orange comp again. And they just ran it and waited for Liquid to make bad plays. 
I will say they did play this game pretty well. Like I, I, I thought it was pretty okay, but I don't ever want to see Bjorkson Corky. I, I don't want to see like a lot of the things that were coming from Liquid. I do think that <laughs> Callista and Renata is a combo you need to learn if it's allowed to be this strong by the time it hits uh, Worlds. It mm-hmm. is like you have to learn at some point, but is it? I don't know what's up, but Hansam is like early game and just like their laning synergy just seems to be getting worse instead of better yeah. at the time. Um, I think Santorin had an okay early game, actually. Um, I do like picking Udyr, personally, but Whippo couldn't carry um, on GP. He was fine, but I don't think we win very often with this GP. Like, that was our playoffs. It felt like last split's playoffs plus a Wukong in jungle. That was literally it, right? And it was really annoying to watch. So, mm-hmm. 100 Thieves, I think they are... They still really haven't shown me much more other than like w- literally wait around for a bad play and a good position, like good position, which is fine, right? We will get some wins at Worlds with them. Maybe they'll hit quarters, but I, I sound like such a hater. I really don't like watching. I feel your play. pain, man. It's Team Liquid. It's fans that are just so sad right now for Team but, Liquid. I mean, Liquid, Liquid sinned even harder. So, like, no, know, that's this, what I mean. This was a really awful yeah, game, exactly. both sides. Yeah. Okay. I still don't know what to think about 100 Thieves. <laughs> yeah, so me too, I, brother. It, it, they're going to win Worlds, and he's like, I don't know, though. I don't I mean, know, though. They won Worlds, but they did they know. win two, though? Yeah, did they I win back to back? I don't know, man. They're just so, like, up in the air as a team. They'll they'll beat Team Liquid, but they'll, they'll lose to Immortals. Like. Yeah. Although they did beat them this time around, so that's okay. Yeah. They did, but I still got it's my Immortal. Cross, yeah, right? it's like, a, it's, yeah, exactly. They're five and two, but CLG was also like four and one or something. So it's mm-hmm. like, I mean, they're four and three now, so they're not they're not like terrible. But it's it's hard to tell right now because we are still early. Um, and hundred thieves, I, I I just don't know, man. I I, st- I, I don't know. Okay, yeah, I, I I feel you on that. I was saying the same thing, Brad. Say a lot. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, if we talk about that game specifically, um, I thought. I mean, I thought Teal's draft was just worthless. Like, what do you do against Wukong Orn jumping on you? Just die. You don't have enough damage or burst either. You're like a weird, long... You gotta, like, set up barrels. You gotta get a bunch of Ren stacks. You gotta land poke on Corky, right? And then you actually don't have follow-up for Udyr. There's no engage. There's no, like, jump on to kill one person target. So it just felt like their comp was really ass. And then you gave over Wukong... So, I don't know, Wukong's like the most broken jungler on the patch, has been for a while now, I just don't think TL had a good draft at all. I think 100 Thieves, I mean, no, they didn't play very proactively, but like, they literally had, like, the draft difference to be like, we don't have to do anything, we win the game if we don't lose early to Callista Renata, and yeah, that's exactly what happened, right? Even when uh, Bwipo did get a sick barrel combo and ulti onto uh, FBI's Aphelios, and he burned Flash and still died, right? That was the first blood 25 minutes in. Mm-hmm. They, they still lost a team fight. Aphelios did no damage in that fight, and they still lost. Um, I mean, Bwipo didn't Flash the uh, Ornulti, ulti, so that was kind of egregious, but like, it, it, it was such a big draft gap that, I mean, yeah, 100 Thieves was pretty uninspiring, but... They win the game by not doing anything in the early game. Yeah, and exactly. TL, I mean, if you're playing Callisto Renata and you don't get an early kill, right, or you don't, <laughs> like, snowball, you don't take every dragon, every Rift Herald, you don't take every single jungle camp from Wukong, you don't deny play, you don't deny CS and farm, you don't take all the play. Like, what, what are you doing? You're wasting your time picking Callista. Um, and, like, Callista Renata might be a good lane, but, like, that is some dog scaling like i don't like renata outscales callista like so hard like i don't even want to put my renata w on callista um i think the funniest thing in that game specifically was when han sama flashed in to throw in core jj on renata yeah and then they just lost a fight and he dies <laughs> it's just like a really one-sided ace and like all right man what, what was your goal here <laughs> what yeah was, what was the flash in on callista uh, ulti so, um, T- like, yeah, 100 Thieves is, like, pretty whatever, but TL is, like, so much more egregious to me. Yeah. Like, 100 Thieves is picking the boring good comp, right? But, hey, it's a good comp. TL is picking these, like, repeatedly terrible comps over and over again that do freaking nothing, that are completely 
based on winning early and outskilling your opponent. Otherwise, you just get outscaled, out team fight, wombo combo, lose. Like they lose to almost every single win condition with some yeah. comps. So, um, I mean, TL. I told, I said the very first podcast of this summer split, I was gonna be really harsh on them, and like I feel like I need to be even harsher. Like they're they're picking the terrible comps and they're playing it really badly. And just to go off Udyr, as a person who's played a ton of Udyr, this is one of the worst Udyr games to play because it's a big AOE wombo combo comp that you're playing against. Udyr doesn't actually do very well in those because he just tries to stun people, but he's just getting CC over and over again before yeah. he can ever touch somebody. And he's playing against one of the worst ADCs. There's two ADCs that he hates playing against. It's Aphelios because you get blown up while you walk into him because you know you don't want to run into an Aphelios. And Vayne, but Vayne's not meta, so it's like you picked him and he got countered by one of the best ADCs into him. So, yeah, um, and one of the best supports, and one of the best supports. I don't know what was the support. I don't know. Lulu. Oh yeah, Lulu. Oh Lulu. yeah, yeah, Lulu. Yeah. You just run away from him, right? You slow yeah. him. You polymorph like. So I, I just thought that the TL draft was really bad. I mean, and it didn't they, they picked there. Udyr early, but yes, they did leave up the. You know, they banned yeah. the Blurs, I think, in the second half. Okay, yeah. they Ours. okay. So they picked Udyr early and they got countered, and they banned Greg. I guess the rest of the draft for TL should have shifted around to protect the Udyr. Right, but like you just gave over Wukong, so I mean I don't even care yeah. anymore after that. <laughs> I, I feel no. like it's just a classic issue if you pick five champions who are all strong, but they don't necessarily work together very well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that, and I wonder yeah. like again that's got to be I don't know if that's more of a is that a coaching issue or are the players like insisting that these picks are good because they, they think they're T one. Yeah, they, they think they're T one. I mean, it, <laughs> it depends on the like coaching structure, like. Because if it's like a TSM thing where they, you know, they, or I think it was TSM where like they, they can kind of just pick wherever they want mm -hmm. type thing, then yeah, it'd be a player issue. But I yep. mean, if that's not the case, it's like Reaper style where re you're gonna play what Reaper tells you. Then obviously and see, that's what I'm, that's what I'm wondering because on this team you have veterans, but they're veterans who I don't want to say have an ego, but they're they've been in the league a long time. People, it's almost like who's gonna say no to them, right? Like who's gonna say no? To that team, like Core JJ, Bjergsen, you know, maybe the only one would be Han Sama where they're like, no, you're playing this champ or whatever, right? Like, maybe that's an issue. Like, it's all speculative, but at the same time, that team has big veteran names. Like, I'm sure they have a strong sway with whatever it is that's going on there. But you're right. I mean, you have to point out those drafts because they do not make sense at all. In fact, I was just browsing around as you were speaking, like, um, you know, Han Sama so far has only won with Zeri. Uh, and Bjergsen is only one with Swain, right? Like those two champions. Um, are busted. And, are yeah, are busted. <laughs> but it's like you can't expect that same kind of thing if you're picking champs that aren't like on that busted tier level. You know what I mean? And still expect to do the same. So I want to see better drafts, like where it doesn't necessarily just be like we pick the strongest champions right now and that's why we beat you. I want them to pick champions that uh, maybe not might be the most broken tier in that role, but work together with, with whatever comp they have to show that there's some kind of strategy going on, right? Um, and like we just mentioned with EG, we see that, but we don't see that with Team Liquid. And Team Liquid is a veteran team. Like you would want to see that on a team with so much experience. So I do think that you're right. While we can't pinpoint 100 Thieves, we could definitely look at Team Liquid and say that is very bad and that is not looking good at the I mean, moment i will say it is week three and they did no kevin very very good <laughs> no one. like no we are overreacting <laughs> in week three for crying out you loud know you know what? that's what i do that's, that, that, that is fair you know <laughs> <laughs> I just kidding. You're, I, you're right I, the voice of reason we haven't even played eg liquid we'll just beat eg next week and then you will all just oh, be like wow they're back <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, man, as a fan, I want that to happen. And you know me, guys, I overreact to everything. So yeah. for me, I mean, Team what, Liquid is that's doomed. That's what being a fan is about, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's actually what yeah. being in the esports community is about in general. Reddit, the casters. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. So some yeah. of the takes you see, like when you go into an LCK match and you just see all the narratives, I'm just like, what? Yeah. It's also very hard because I'll go back to what I said in the very first podcast of this of this split was that I generally don't 
expect anything because it doesn't matter. The top eight teams get the playoffs and it's going to be who we've always predicted. Team Liquid, you know, Cloud9, Evil Geniuses, right? And maybe 100 Thieves in there somewhere. That would be the biggest upset. <laughs> but we kind of know where this thing is going. It's just like right now, like it can change from week to week. And that happens in regular sports too. So I think it's uh, somewhat acceptable to overreact uh but let's move on to the next kind of batch uh unless is there anything else you guys wanted to say about any of those things yeah mitchell well, yeah i wanted to say just like to hop on to that point that you just okay said, just like yeah i mean we actually do give other teams the benefit of the doubt mm -hmm. they get to slack off in the regular season we actually never give that to team liquid um so i i kind of want to start giving it more to team liquid but I, I think the reason why a lot of people don't give that same slack off mentality to Team Liquid, like they do to 100 Thieves or EG or even maybe like, I don't know, some other C9. team. Um, C9. Well, actually, C9 usually try hard regular season and then mm -hmm. they just don't make it to Worlds anyways, right? That's true. Uh, that yeah. happens a lot. Um, that's, that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does. That uh, happens. Recently, yeah. It's weird because they usually, they used to be the gauntlet. The other way. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. They used to be the gauntlet team and then uh, Reaper left and then now they're like the try hard in regular season and then like win spring mm -hmm. and then kind of look disappointing in summer. Um, but we never give Team Liquid it. And I think it's because like everyone expects this team to be so good. Yeah. That, like if you're playing at 50%, you should still win every game. Like I think if you go back to like lock in, post lock in pre spring season, and you like just got everybody to like predict every team liquid game you'd be hard pressed not to just like predict every tl to just win every re regular season game yep. but they didn't do that obviously and no team's going to do that but that's the expectation fans have because their team is so stacked and their org is so stacked but maybe they are just phoning in and during the regular season right like we don't actually know until it gets to playoffs but we're analysts and we're a show and we have to talk about what we see right now. Yeah. And they look sure. like garbage, but like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're all still going to probably say they're going to go to worlds. And mm -hmm. I mean, we just don't give them benefit of the doubt. Like we do these other teams that that's not in the regular season. So, I mean, I want to both be the harsh person I am saying their drafts are terrible, but also being like, I mean, this team is still aiming to go to worlds. We know that they're very likely to, maybe they yeah. are just saying, Hey, we're phoning it in. Our teammates, our, our opponents are, our, the other teams in the league are. Maybe we wish we could phone it in and still win. Yeah. But, hey, we'll still make it top eight, You just right? need to have perspective. So, yeah, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Nope, TL needs to win every game. So, <laughs> I mean, it's also yeah. really important to note that this is probably one of the most expensive rosters ever uh -huh. um, in NA history because it's world is at NA. Steve has literally said this roster was only only came together. He could afford the budget for it. From the sponsors because they couldn't make activations at worlds right so mm -hmm. like however they phone it in they're probably going to aim to at least be top two because you really want to maximize your lives which is top six and then you would like to just get that like seating right so that you get the easiest matchups and you don't have to deal with like a really hot eg or c9 figuring shit out right so this they will there is a chance they'll phone it in 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 the sense that like they don't want to show everything they don't want to try too hard and burn out right before it actually matters but they still would probably aim to be second, which to be fair, they are second right now, as cursed as it is at five and two. They are mm -hmm. second. It's just their losses look really bad. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think it's one of those things where it's just, it's like the Yankees, if you're a baseball fan, you know, they have the money, or if you're just like a fan of teams that just always seem to win. Like you, you just expect them to be great and they're just not performing at the level you expect. Hold up, is Lee Dad making a sports reference that isn't basketball? I know. I hold up. How did I even? How did I even know Yo, that? COVID changed. You. No, I think what it is is the Yankees are so big they transcend sports like genres. It's like doesn't matter what sport you listen to. You know the Yankees and like they just have money. Uh, and so yeah, it's it's really it's just crazy that that's kind of the the same kind of analogy. But uh, here's how I want to frame the rest of the league at this point, right? Because I think to me, at least in my opinion, maybe you guys might disagree, and we could talk about that later. But in my mind, I think we have a clear bottom. That's Immortals, TSM, and Dignitas, right? And then in the middle. We have FlyQuest, CLG, C9, and Golden Guardians. Now, obviously, C9 had a slow start because of the visa issues with Berserker. Um, so I want to kind of pivot, like, are any of those other three teams, FlyQuest, CLG, or Golden Guardians, are they actually better than Cloud9? Is Cloud9 coming in fourth? Um, and then after that, I think that fifth place team is really interesting 
because again, CLG has come out with a hot start, right? Like they're right around mm-hmm. that fifth place level. Um, Golden Guardians has shown that they can be good, but oftentimes they kind of disappoint. And, and FlyQuest, who all of us, at least on this podcast, not on other podcasts, by the way, but on this podcast, we put we put FlyQuest pretty high. I think for a lot of us, that was like our fifth place team. Um, so yeah. I kind of want to frame that. Like, can any of those three teams, can they beat C9 at this point? Because I think that's kind of how it works out. Like Dignitas, TSM, yeah. Immortals, we know they're bottom tier. But these other teams, they at times, it does seem like they have a shot. So what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I think the most obvious answer that you know, will come to mind right now is like, I think FlyQuest did, did beat them. So mm-hmm. yeah, they just beat C9. They beat C9. Yep. <laughs> like, yeah, you're right. This week, right? Okay. I was yep. like, yeah. Or yeah. I was like, am I misremembering? Yeah. So they did. So like, that's the obvious answer. Right. And I, I also think that of the three you just mentioned, uh, FlyQuest has probably shown the most consistency, even though the st- the records aren't different. Um, They've shown the most consistency. You can see, Philip has been surprisingly okay. Like I, I think his early game is still kind of sketch, but I think that he doesn't have to be that good. Um, and then Takui has been doing. I think Takui has been playing top two, top three mid laners this split so far. He's just been very on point in my mind. And their bot lane is fine. Like Johnson is not as bad anymore. Like as last split. So I think that them getting what fifth last season, fourth or fifth last season with Johnson playing, I think a really bad split for him. And now, like, him having this mini resurgence is, like, all the right signs for them to maybe punch above Cloud9. Yeah. Okay. I would say if any team's going to do it, it is FlyQuest. But in my opinion, at least, Cloud9 is 3-1 and one with an asterisk. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. Week 1 wasn't Cloud9. Right. Yeah. And that that is three of their losses out of four they have. Sure. So... I would still say I, I would still say that it's very possible that Cloud9 wins the entire split. Wow, you know, okay. I, yeah, I, I think that is possible. Yeah. Uh but I'm a li- I'm more loose on the idea because EG it seems not to be like for funning uh the regular season as much as I expected them to. So I would say that chances are they would probably be top uh, top four for sure. I think FlyQuest would still four. be a number five team, but we'd have to see another rematch. And again, I mean, FlyQuest is their only loss, and it was with actual Cloud9 rather than right, right. Project Cloud9. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, yeah I, I, I mean, it's FlyQuest is definitely the best of the, the middle pack teams that are right underneath C9. Yeah, I do. I also agree with the sentiment that, you know, C9. They could they could just you know, just randomly win the whole split too. I think, or they could they could definitely run it like be in the finals against EG. Um, they like, man, Berserker is so insane. <laughs> I don't know why people are giving him Zeri. Like that guy is so unbelievably good at Zeri. I I don't think you should give him Zeri. Like yeah, they beat him with Zeri. Um, and it was kind of a massive support gap. Like, I mean, Aphromoo should not have taken all those kills. But it was pretty hype that he was, anyways. On yeah, Brock. yeah. Um, it was really, really fun watching like Aphromoo just completely support gap him and just run around the map and just um, take the bot lane lead. And um, mm-hmm. the Jinx Braum was a pretty fun combo to to if you land your Q. I mean, you kind of just like lose the trade really badly as Zeri Lulu. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, FlyQuest I think is is pretty dang good. Like I actually think that. Um, What's his name? Philip had a really great weekend. Mm-hmm. I, I agree. I mean, he solo killed uh, Jensen. That was pretty hype, right? They they both had both sums. It was a pretty even one v one. He totally got solo killed. Like I actually thought, Philip. I mean, he's finally looking like oh yeah, he's an improvement over Kumo. Like he looks pretty damn good actually. Mm-hmm. Um, so if he can keep that up, I mean, he's a rookie, so we don't know what his peak is. We don't know how consistent he's gonna be. We don't know if he's gonna play even better next weekend or worse or maybe not be invisible like i don't know but uh if he keeps playing like this i mean FlyQuest, i think they could do more than just be fifth place i actually think that this team could be really really good um their problems are actually just themselves they when they threw against team liquid when they have like little happy mistakes like going too far for kills for jose diodo or for johnson those are their main issues and 
otherwise, it does feel like all their drafts are pretty solid. All of their game plan and their mechanics and just they know what to do in the game to win the game. But it's usually their execution on those strategies is what falters when they lose. But when they win yeah. and they execute well, this team looks really, really good. I actually think like they look when they're winning, they look the most clean out of any team. Like yeah. maybe EG looks a bit cleaner when they're stomping a lower tier team or when Hundred Thieves stomped Immortals. That that looked pretty clean, obviously. But I mean I mean I'm I'm gonna say it now because I'm like the OG FlyQuest fan. But <laughs> yes, I would you not are. be surprised if like if FlyQuest week after week after week looked the same and and had steady improvements to the way they looked this weekend and even the weekend before, they could be challenging to break into the top four and be messing with, with some of our other teams that we think um, you know should be above them so flat quest yeah. i mean i like you take the nameplates off they look damn good you could you could put some high level names under there and be like yeah this team is that good oh that's fly quest what like this team's yeah. very good so um cloud nine i also think is quite good too um clearly like they they're so new with each other so it's still hard to judge them um but man their individual players are still nuts um so yeah, yeah, I, I, I think that's that that'd be something really good to kind of hone in on is is C nine, right? Uh, first of all, I, I just do echo kind of your sentiments with Philip. I think he's, I think on GLXP they kind of looked at him as a side grade, but I honestly don't agree. I think he's actually been better. I think he's he's playing much better than than Kumo was, and uh, I'm really excited to see the team because I also think. Uh, Takui is playing great again too. I mean, he was already, and it's nice to see them develop and just be, you know, consistently getting better. And then Afro Mu being kind of that veteranship, uh, you know, and and really kind of anchoring that team. So I, I am excited to see that, and I think all of us kind of had them around that fifth. But you know, it would be interesting if they could even break top four if they nudge like hundred thieves or something out of out of fourth or something like that, because they are kind of knocking on the door. Their only loss, really, that was kind of the surprise is their loss to immortals because immortals is very bad right but their only other two losses were against team liquid and eg right top top teams right so and and in, in those cases like they're tapping on them you know what i mean like they have potential so i think you're right in that assessment of like look they're right on the door of these top t top tier teams um i'd like to see that happen if it's this split or not not sure but they're right there. And I am excited for that because I, I do like how this team is developing. FlyQuest is that org that people like to, you know, love because of their their whole initiative with with Mother Nature, you know, and the Sea Quest and the Tree Quest and all of that stuff. Um, so I love it. I love that there's a team that's kind of the opposite route of just paying for the most expensive roster or whatever. And they're just they're doing really well. Uh, but C9 Let's evaluate them because we have seen a little bit now with their new or not new, but their actual roster. Right. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on Sven, you know, specifically, you could talk about the rest of the team as well. But Sven is kind of the one that I was worried about the most about him being support. I know a lot of people are already like, he's going to be good. He's going to be good. I was questionable. I've seen him. I think he's not bad. Honestly, like I actually thought he wouldn't be uh, as good as he is this quickly. So. Uh, I guess everybody on the inside and you guys were right. But what are your thoughts on, on that team as a whole? I think I was on the boat of Zen should be pretty good because I was saying supports in the league just aren't that good per se. Like they're mm -hmm. decent, but they, they're not mechanical gods. Or anything. And ADC is generally just better mechanically. Zen being, you know, a legacy, one of the best AD carries out there, right, in the West. Um, yeah. Maybe not as much recently. It's been yet to be on TSM, so I don't blame them. But um, <laughs> I will say that I think for his first two weeks, he was pretty good. I think he's got solid mechanics. His Yumi play was, like, you can meme about Yumi all you want, but his Yumi play was correct and like was good. Uh, I will say that he did get exploited, and you saw the lack of experience he had as a support in that game against like us. Like, I mean, Afro gapped him. Like, it, just, it was like such a huge gap. And then that was one of those games where it's like, when you play your fill role or your auto fill role, and you're like, you know what to do, but like, you're not you don't have the reps right so like just certain like certain if the other person is a veteran they know how to play these scenarios or know how to run better like you could just get gapped really hard um it wasn't just his fault though but i think he was playing fine i think the rest of c9 has also been pretty impressive like i mean okay this is the same start they had last split the three one start so oh uh, that's a little curse uh i will have an anecdote i think berserker is crazy i did see zven on one of the talk shows i think it was like so many insight or something like that he was on a talk show he's really good at giving interviews because he's just very blunt very frank and oh 
he said essentially he said that Berserker probably has better hands than he does, like if, as far as eighty carries goes. But he has like very little brain. Oh. Uh, and then when asked to elaborate, he basically said like when asked like why would you build collector here, right? On like against like all armor or whatever. He's like he point he just pointed to like a top Korean eighty carry like oh ruler builds this, or <laughs> builds this. and I was like oh my god he's literally just summoned an eighty carry for yeah. oh no. <laughs> So yeah. it hasn't come to bite them yet. He keeps on just getting Zeri, and Zeri's default build is very good, right? Just you know, like armor pancakes of her alts and just how she functions. But like, I was like, ah, we could see a world where like, if his pull is pinched or like in just like some weird scenario, he's gonna be like when Death built IE second item at Worlds last year. Like, I'm, I'm a little worried about that. Um, but you know, you don't need that much brains. I wish, I wish he had a veteran support. I don't think Berserker's the type of AD carry who should have Zern. I think Zern's playing well. But he would be so much better off having Vulcan here mm. or Core, right? If you could make Core leave TL. It's just so weird to me that you have this prodigy AD carry and then not like a veteran support with him. Like he should not be the one having to teach Sven how to lane together. Mm -hmm. Good point. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I will say, I mean, what veteran support would you get, right? Because like most of them, not truth. Like, what you had? You had Vulcan last night. Yeah, but money. Like but money. Yeah. Yeah. Money. Yeah. I I think like for me, I would say Zven is probably the third best support in the league right now. Uh, I would put him behind Core JJ, obviously, and Aphromu is the second best. Other than that, I think support role is pretty dead. I mean, it has been for you, a while. You'd put him ahead of Vulcan, even with how EJ's playing. Oh right, yeah, Vulcan does it. Okay, so he's fourth. Forgot about. Okay, him. I was my like, bad. I was like, yeah, I was, I was thinking like, of that too. That's a, little, no, that's a pretty bad, hot take. <laughs> yeah. No, my I bad. He's my been bad. Well. Core JJ, Vulcan, Aphromu, Zven. My bad. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm okay with that. I, I mean, <laughs> he said it himself, bro. He's playing like Yumi and Karma and Lulu. Like, yeah, yeah, really he is. Really not that hard. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it, it's it's pretty well documented that support is by far the easiest role to go pro on, and when you get if you look at a lot of like the best sports, a lot of them are actually like role swaps. They aren't necessarily mm -hmm. people who started the game playing support. They're Good people point. who started other roles and then came to support. Core JJ was an AD carry main. Zven was an AD carry main. Who he? Well, he's kind of been a bit shaky last year. He was a mid laner. These are a lot of like even Afro move. sports that we have. Yep. Technically, Afro move came from AD. Their entire career has been yeah. a bit. Uh, it's been a bit scuffed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Lahens is an Elise one trick. That's so yep. random. <laughs> <laughs> but he also plays Singe before, so like again, not yeah, well, Sin... he plays a support, but traditionally not support characters. Mm -hmm. It's just really weird. <laughs> it's just yeah, supports a weird role. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, Zven is. I mean, his okay, his Yumi play. I mean, I don't want to say it was like. I mean, it was. It was pretty interesting, actually. He he mastered the champion loading screen, bro. Like dude, it was like, <laughs> oh my god, dude, he is not letting the enemy get a bubble. Or uh, I don't remember who it was. It was oh, it was Palafox, right? I was like, yeah, this is some, this is more than I've ever seen a Yumi do. <laughs> like body blocking, wow. getting in and out, autoing, trying to uh, eat every sleep and then go in. I think the one time That's he crazy. actually he played messed... the game. Yeah, he played the game. <laughs> like the one time he actually did mess up was he ate asleep and then he ulted and then he got cc'd while he was inside somebody and his ult canceled i was like haha you're not the perfect yeah. yumi player you still messed up um but i was like damn dude this is peak yumi play <laughs> so, <laughs> sad to say yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how, how sad um but yeah i mean zven's good like yeah there's not much to say this is an easy roll easy champions yeah. now now if we ever get back to like engage supports I bet you he's gonna monkey out quite a lot. Like this dude will <laughs> monkey out. Like Fair if enough. we get to That's not only Leona, Alistair stuff. Or he'll fresh. be born to do this his whole life. Because yeah. <laughs> True. Maybe it's one or the maybe, other, right? Maybe he was he's born not gonna to be maybe... average. He's just gonna yeah. either boom or be amazing. Maybe he'll just be so dang good because he's so used to arcade shifting forward and dying, right? Yeah, maybe exactly. He's just, he's just he's just ready for the Leona. Um, yep. Yeah, we'll see. So I, I think like that's that should be C9's main worry, right? Is where does the meta shift? Because like, dude, like this this Seraphine Yumi mm -hmm. crap, it, people are gonna start to really really hate it. I would not be surprised if Riot Games change it before World starts. So I hope so. Or this even maybe 
right? Or NA playoffs? Like, what if they change it right before NA playoffs? And Sven's oh. like, oh my god, dude, I have to Bro, you only got a world skin, man. Yeah. Yeah. He did. Yeah. Sure did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Yumi what? was that ubiquitous at last world, though. Like, it wasn't, like, game break. It wasn't high pick, but she still got a Yumi skin. She still got a world yeah. skin. Bro. Sure, but she that's just a because world skin. Mako's, Mako's really good. <laughs> yeah. And so is I Viper. Mean, yeah. Like, and then... I think one of us could attach to Viper, and we would probably be able to at least win up to quarterfinals. Look, man, I like every, that. every chance I can get to flame Yumi, I'm gonna take. All right, yeah. I hate that <laughs> chance. That's fair. That's true. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, champ the, champ just, the champ is too good, though. I do think it's too strong right now. Like, like beyond all the memes about how uninteractive and stupid it is, I think just like at a baseline level, just being like, okay, I accept that Riot puts this in the game. If you take that, I actually think she's just too good right now. Um. Like, I, I think it's too hard to punish her in lane. Like, I in pro play, she's played in other leagues too. Like, God, I really need to see her die more. Because mm -hmm. Nautilus and Leona and all that stuff is just not seeing play. And I guess it's not strong enough. I thought it would yeah. still be fine. But it really is not being played that much. So, she just doesn't get punished in lane. Yeah, it just opens her up. Because those are typically her counters. If you can CC her, she can't jump right back in. So, uh, but with, with kind of being in that mode of enchanters uh she does kind of thrive because she has a lot easier lanes a lot lot less threat yeah double combat spells is broken yeah that's the also that another take yeah. two extra summoner spells or ad carry can take teleport ghost i'm having a stroke cleanse barrier <laughs> whatever he's so he's so great he's so this, thought this out about this start trying to say cleanse from and heal at the same yeah. time and i'm just saying cluh cluh i don't know <laughs> <laughs> The unspeakable yeah, the, horror that you make. Yeah. Yeah, bro. It's, I don't know. You went to the back rooms. You this is funny. Yumi. There should be some kind of episode of like the trauma that Yumi has done on Alistair. Because I know Alistair plays. <laughs> I mean, he's an ADC maid, so uh, he's had a very hateful relationship with that champion. Uh, but bro, I mean, it also like, gives like a free death cap or like 60 plus yes. AD late game yeah, to a carry for no reason. Like, or not mm -hmm. death cap, but like 100 plus AP for an AP carry. Yep. That, for no reason. She doesn't have to interact to earn it, by the way. She could be she level just attaches. one and still do it. Yep. That's absurd. Yeah. Yeah. Champ's not balanced. Champ needs to be redesigned. Needs to have some form, like some form of counterplay, whether it's with her ultimate, or like you know you have to be out to use her ult or something, or her W mm -hmm. has a longer cooldown. You can't jump between people as much. She can't have two stacks of heal. Her Q is a joke in laning phase that does way too much damage, and it's undodgeable really because it's, it's also an execute click adventure for game. some reason by the way yep if you I didn't know, know that, that. Well, and then her <laughs> passive is just Zareth passive but so much more broken but she also has the same auto attack range as like the mm -hmm. average 80 carry i'm pretty sure she has 550 range i think it's a yeah, perma she... shield as well that doesn't have a timer which is only a feature on like malphite shield i think like it gives very so few much mana back mm -hmm. she's a stupid cat God, I, hate cats. <laughs> hey, I like cats. Yeah, I cats. Excuse me. <laughs> oh yeah, you that's right. Like Kevin's a cat. And it's yeah, he's a cat. I have my the worst part right is you can dumpster Yumi as much as you want, but if someone else on our team gets strong, it doesn't matter. She can yeah. just sit on them anyways. Yeah, she's a ticking yeah. time bomb, and that's kind of what sucks about um you know cer certain champs like that. And I think overall, I think the thing is, even if someone is not good with Yumi, the fact that Yumi attaches to a person can just never die if you you know Literally just Yumi stays there. Yeah, it's it's just <laughs> not fun. So now I, I, I say yeah, uh, the bet one thing I have been seeing a bit of that I am happy to see. And don't get me wrong, I don't like this champion very much either. <laughs> Most of the time, I dodge it in solo queue. Yeah. One of the best picks into Yumi is Sona. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I agree. So you've seen the counterpick yeah. a couple times. Yeah. 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 Sona, because Sona gives the... Sona's like, it takes longer to get to where she is, but she gives it all in AoE instead of like mm -hmm. to one person. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and then Sona's also has her own health bar that she gets to manipulate too. So, exactly. Um, yep. Yeah. Well, I know we could spend a whole episode just hating on Yumi because that's definitely easy to do but uh let's move on to uh clg right because this team was really crappy uh for a long time and then all of a sudden shot up to first place and now you know they've kind of had a couple of losses now and so they're still kind of in this middle of the pack you know tier but where do you see they go from here are they 
like actually pretty good this year or or this the yeah. split yeah or are they going to just mm-hmm. drop back down what are your thoughts on CLG <laughs> let's let's talk about them a little bit <laughs> did that okay that skit that that was the first seed okay that cat in the hat whatever thing mm-hmm. with afro in it that was one of my favorite like bits in a lot that was good time. i think that was really good um as for how CLG played like give them some credit we're not even when we were saying they were like a lot better this but they weren't like first place right so them losing to liquid and c9 like that's totally fine uh i think the way they lost was a little concerning like liquid went from you know having a pretty like sad and slow drawn out loss to hundred thieves to like pretty much curb stomping clg in that game um they did pick a mumu which i was like cool we we thought a mumu would come it did come it was paired with Calista, which is correct i think mm-hmm. but they just got boomed like it was not close um I don't think CLG is weak, but I don't think they're going to be a title contender, which is not a controversial thing, right? Right. Uh, I, I think that Dokla is still an upgrade over Jenkins, and I think that because your solo lanes are pretty good, like I don't think Palfox, I've always thought Palfox was a good player, but let's put it this way like you need a good team in League of Legends to really look good. You have to be something special to look good and not have a good team. And I think Pal Fox is actually quite good. He's like in the Blaze Olive tier for me, where he's like a very good player, but he just has never had a solid jungler or like solo lanes to play around. Like, it's just hard to look good as a mid laner, especially when you keep picking scaling picks, right? So yeah. the pieces are there. They'll probably end up in the top six or seven, right? They'll hit playoffs, but I, I don't think they were supposed to be beating Liquid or C9 at this juncture. And they didn't. Sure. Um, we did say that if they were going to beat C9, it would be this week, but. It didn't happen. Yeah. But. Yeah. I mean, I. To be fair, I think saying they're. I. I feel like we should stop saying they're going to hit playoffs. I think the question is, <laughs> yeah, we're not hitting just, playoffs. Yeah. But yeah, it's kind of a given. That, that's a different thing. All right. I yeah. Think, true. With, true. I. I mean, CLG. I think they're. Probably six or seven, like Kevin was saying. I do think they're better than Golden Guardians. I think they just they're they're missing something and i'm not exactly sure what it is because i don't like i think they have like good individual skill i don't know maybe it's the, you know we were talking about maybe it's bad like team environment or like structure or something like that, that that's the issue because we've seen them like they've had big names where they've had like rosters where you look on paper and like it should be really good and i think they kind of have the same issue like immortals does or tsm used to where they have good names but they kind of just like you know managed to lose a lot and i'm not sure what it is though i do think something changed i don't know what but because they are doing much better this split so yeah things are changing for the better for them yeah it's good it's a good sign yeah this i mean this weekend was always gonna be tough um i mean i was this is this was their one chance to beat c9 right this is c9 was probably gonna be at their worst for this year and they're probably close to being at their best this year um but I mean, there was a patch change too. So, I mean, I think, I feel like if they got to stay on last patch, they would look a lot better. But this new patch did change things up a little bit. Um, I mean, I think CLG's main problem, and I really apologize, is contracts. Like, he kind of solo lost both of their games in the early game. Like, he went in for greedy um, invades. I, I'm i pretty sure, I don't know about the Cloud9 game, but I, but I know about the other game. Um, he was on Wukong, and he just, they went in. It was against Team Liquid, right? And he just went in, and Swain was just there, and they all got wiped. And it was like, oh, game over. And, um, yeah, it's just contracts is good, but he's just not smart enough. Like, yeah. he just doesn't have enough awareness. He thinks he's stronger than he always is. That's always been his main problem. He thinks his team is closer than they really are. He thinks his team has better reaction timing i don't know better lane pressure i don't know what it is but contract is always just pushing too far doesn't quite understand the game state to make these greedy invades and he always wants to make the greedy invade like you're playing wukong and viego man like yeah you can make the invade but like maybe wait till you're level six or like (laughs) don't invade um so yeah, I think that's what's missing for this team is, like, a really, really solid good jungler. Like, I do think Contracts, he's always going to find a way to mechanically outplay you in a couple of instances in a game. But when it comes to tenacity and actually being able to, like, consistently be good and be a top jungler, he just doesn't have it. Um, right. 
I don't know. I don't. He just hasn't had it since he was on Cloud Nine. He just hasn't been able to be a top jungler. And even then, right when he was on Cloud Nine, he was considered top lone jungler. It's because all of his laners were always kicking in the other laners' teeth in. And if you don't have that, it takes a lot more to be a better jungler. And yep. um, I think all of like the players on CLG are fine too. But um, oh, what was it? Oh yeah, it was um, they had a, a TK, and their TK would save somebody. And then Fudge would just kill the other person <laughs> that TK <laughs> didn't eat. And it was like you just abandoned your Senna or you abandoned your Zoe. Whichever one you abandoned, <laughs> Fudge just comes in and murders them. Yeah. So it's like the, also the coordination too is just, you know, it's just a little, needs a little extra if they want to, if they want the extra oomph. But at their level right now, since they're probably not going to be breaking into that top four or top five, um, yeah, sixth place seems pretty good for them, and that's that's fine. Yeah. Good stuff. Good job, guys. Yeah, I mean, uh, better than tenth place, right? Or ninth yeah, place, right? Yeah, better than tenth place for like what a couple of years in a row or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. Like I do definitely <laughs> think that this is an improvement year for them. Uh, I think they're right at six, right? Like I think it's mm -hmm. between them or Golden Guardians, right? So it's whoever is better out of those two. That's hey, there's your sixth place team. I honestly, and that's an improvement, right? It's nothing crazy or spectacular, but it's good to see them at least on the right track. Um, any, is there anything you guys wanted to talk about these bottom teams? Because uh, you got Immortals, TSM, Dignitas, Golden Guardians. Uh, but if not, that's okay too because, I mean, look, we don't need to spend too much time on teams that are just sucking. But if there's anything in particular, uh, speak now. I mean, uh, League Dad's not a TSM fan, so we don't need I'm to spend as long. Rapping that's right. See, I control the flow of the show, right? So, like, that's <laughs> you notice this year we're talking more about Team Liquid, right? Hey, there you go, right? So. All right, here, here's the conspiracy <laughs> theory. League Dad is still a closet TSM fan. He just didn't want us to flame it as much. So we yeah, there it is. On podcast. That's it. I Secretly, when the cameras are uh, off, I'm like, goodness. oh, thank goodness they didn't flame TSM. Thank goodness. We just <laughs> moved on. So, anyway, speaking of TSM. Uh, oh, I had, had to come up. There we go. Toss, I mean, like, this one has to be spoken about. Because Dignitas was looking really weak. They just weren't doing that well. Um, not just record-wise, but just they weren't getting across the finish line in a lot of games. And it is honest. It is truly surprising to me that TSM can be worse than them. Um, and mm -hmm. not just in that game, but just, like, this season. Like, I was, like, the first week, I'm like, okay. They, they showed signs of life. Like, they could be good. But I, I think, and I don't actually know TSM's week-to-week -week record, so I'll have to check real quick. But, like, it feels like they, they're, they like, I don't know. Maybe they're just going to lose somebody. Like, it, my, my theory is, like, Spica is already, like, in talks of leaving the team or something out the door it, it just there's there is talent there i think makeful still not a bad player like i think he could be a good player on a good team right um kind of like how jizuke was on eg like, he could be at that caliber potentially but like this team their biggest problem is who need to me like that I'm, yeah like, ab long ab short, we'd say it week to week right but it's like it's getting worse like somehow mm. it's like I, I watch it i'm like if you're not playing you're like super comfort characters you kind of look like you don't know how to play and that's really yes. a problem and he doesn't fit the team either like he could even if he was playing like at a good level he just does not fit what this team needs um and in my yeah. mind this team needs like an impact type player like they need someone who is consistent who can be a rock so Spica can focus on getting tactical ahead if you can get tactical ahead and babysit for him even if tactical doesn't have the brain cells needed it, it doesn't matter right they can still win games um because right now, like, there's just too many fire spots. You can't have a fire in top lane without brain cells and a fire in bot lane without brain cells. This is unwinnable and yeah. against, like, teams with any competence, right? So, yeah, I... Ugh, yeah. God, TSM has a lot of things going I, on there. Yeah, I mean, I, like, obviously, I agree, but also I disagree. Like, I, I, I agree with everything you said, except the fact that Hootie is the worst. I mean, Hootie is terrible. <laughs> but tackle mm -hmm. i think is so bad is like by far their worst player like it's dude like, you've been on that like tactical hate. train yeah the I've tactical the ta hate train like, dude he was on Kalissa, right and mm -hmm. like his whole team's backing out and he's like i'm going in guys <laughs> and then, like he's yeah. just, it was like against the enemy red buff i think they were like invading or something and the play is clearly over the rest of his team is clearly backing out 
and he's just going in, face checking a bush to three people, and mm-hmm. he flashes over the wall, and then they lose two. Like he baits his team, they all lose a bunch of flashes, and two of them die, and then the game is just over. And then you see, and then and then you see Hootie get solo killed at the top lane. I'm like, ah, there it is, there it is. First, who, first tackle runs it, and then Hootie runs it, and I'm like, <laughs> in that mind, I'm just like. All right, tactical started it. He's the worst one then. <laughs> and yeah. I don't I don't know, man. That guy is so boosted. Like he just has no game sense. He's just he thinks he's immortal or something. I don't know. He doesn't I I, I don't know, man. He there's no way he plays the game. Like he I know he does play the game a lot, but it just feels like when you watch him, like he doesn't actually play the game. Like mm-hmm. who greeds that hard for like an extra auto in a bush as Callista or like trying to steal the red buff? When, like their full health i so um yeah t- tactical to me is just like by far the worst player on tsm and maybe in the whole league this guy's so bad i don't know what happened to him i i feel really bad harping on it every time because he used to be considered a top adc literally like what a year or two ago yeah and he's just terrible mm-hmm. he's just absolutely god awful so um yeah i i, yeah. I mean i think he hasn't <laughs> i mean if you've been right and he hasn't been performing and you know Kind of unfortunate. So bad, dude. Even when his team is winning, he's the one that's getting caught and dying over and over and over again. It's like he has no brain. He has actually negative brain. He's so bad he gives his opponents more IQ. More IQ. It's it's terrible. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, let's talk about some uh, meta stuff because that's very depressing uh, seeing how far TSM has fallen (laughs) from grades. Uh, Oh, yeah. You're right, Alistair. I am. It does still kind of sting, man, when we talk about TSM, even though it's totally different uh, roster. But let's go to (laughs) let's go to the meta stuff. All right. Here's something interesting. Four out of the top five most present champions are ADC champs. Uh, we have, so the top five presents are Zeri, Senna, Wukong, Lucian, and Kalista. Uh, Kalista still is a mystery to me. I know, I know she's played in other regions, but good gosh, does she look doo doo in NA? Uh, she's got a 17% win rate. Uh, I mean, it just, it does not look good. Zeri is looking good. And so, you know, that's no surprise. Uh, Also, Wukong looking very good. But what are your thoughts on the meta? Is there anything in particular that you wanted to point out? Uh, Things that you think should be seen, but is not or, or whatever. What what, what are your thoughts on the meta in in pro play so far? Um, My thoughts on the meta so far, I think it's been fine. Like I, I enjoyed that the fights have been longer. That's where I'm getting a lot of my enjoyment for. That's true relatively again they're not like season five season six levels of game or fight length right or season four god forbid um but i will say that like i think besides the cost of pick i do like that they're what oh sorry uh i do like how the fights are going there's like a lot more back and forth there's a lot more dances uh relatively speaking compared to last split um so i think that so far the patch is going in the right direction i do like that oh i also do like that the patches are big and meaningful like every time the patch happens like you can actually see like and we we didn't discuss this as much because it's kind of hard to pinpoint team to team across a whole league but like you can actually see like teams like clg like just struggle because like it is a whole new game in a sense right like you could you can pick what you picked last like last week but it's going to be a lot different and in a lot of cases worse um I will say, like, Calista is, like, it's just nonsense to me. Uh, I do think, as I said before, Calista Renata is good. This is just a strong combo. Um, I don't really know exactly what makes this super good, but I've seen it work. Um, I think notably, I think LCK plays it. It's not, Calista's not picked much in LC, LPL. It's been picked six times, and it's also been picked six, six times in LCS. However, the difference is that LPL plays, like, 2.5x more games than we do so mm-hmm, that says true. a lot if that like to me close to similar to jace where it's not completely worthless late game but it's always there for the early right and na has just historically been dog at playing anything that's like early game tempo pushing like jace like na jace has been a, a perennial meme forever so when like philip does decent on jace or whatever that or summit starts winning on jace like that's why it sticks out right because it's just an anomaly um, yeah, but in my mind, if an aggressive pick isn't working in LPL, it's a bad thing. So, even if there are combos that can make it work, like in the end of the day, it's just a character to ferry a stronger character to late game. And then to me, like Renata, late game is really strong, and it can mm-hmm. empower the rest of your team. But I don't think any teams necessarily get the full picture of why it's being picked. Um, 
And like really quickly, like LP, uh, when Team Liquid picked Renata Calista, they did Corky, right? Corky yep. mid, and they played GP top. Like there, there is your scaling, right? Great. There's like where you're you're playing to those outs. But then they picked Udyr also in that rotation, which to me they wanted a tempo early game jungler that could clear fast, sure. But Udyr wasn't going to help set up those fights. Like what is where was the fight setup going to come from? Anytime right. Liquid has ever done well in any meta, to me, has always been when like he's playing, uh, Cordier is playing like super good engage. He's playing Rakan is one of his best characters, period. Like if I see a Rakan, no matter what the meta is, no matter what patch Rakan's on, like I just think we're going to win. And it, it, Renata is not that, right? And if no one else can be that, like Udyr can't be that against the AoE yep. um, that they were playing into in 100 Thieves, you're not going to get there. So... I think there are some trap picks, and that I think the meta is fun until Seraphine becomes meta and ended, and then we're going to be in yeah, literal hell. Sucks. I watched yeah. DRX yesterday against Gen G. They managed to lose a game that I didn't think was humanly possible to lose with Seraphine, and they built Crown yeah. Seraphine in, into Sarah. It's like it was to me garbage build, garbage play, and they still almost won. Like uh, it almost looked inevitable until they like threw a, like three. That times was a bad row. Chovy game, man. Chovy played so bad, they still won. Dude, <laughs> that's crazy. You, you could have told me that wasn't Chovy, right? And yeah. I would have believed you. That was awful. And they still won. Like they rulers are top. Okay? <laughs> Lucian into Seraphine should never be like a winning matchup like game two in my mind. Anyways, that was funny. that's where it is. We, it, it's been pretty fun so far. Long story short, it's been fun so far, but the apocalypse is coming unless the patches save us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for me, I mean, I'm I'm enjoying watching it a lot more than previous, just because I feel like there's so much more skill expression. You you don't just necessarily win lane because you just kind of like randomly all in someone because they auto attacked a minion at the wrong time and you can just one shot them. Like you're you can very clearly tell who's the better player because they're taking the small advantages now mm -hmm. rather than just oh you messed up once I'm just gonna punish you by killing you. Yeah, it, it feels like yeah, it just wasn't as impressive to me. Because you kind of just like one shot everyone. Um, I also think, I mean, aside from you know, like so much presence on AD carry, because I was him biased towards that. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I I just enjoy it like much more. I think there's a lot more skill expression just overall. Like I said, nice. I also yeah. do want to touch on the uh, Calista Renata that you're talking about, Kevin. It's really good because Renata is one of the best early game or like laning phase supports like for the first few levels just because of how broken her E is because you'll poke shield and hit the minion wave at the same time mm -hmm. and slow yeah and slow exactly <laughs> mm -hmm. the, the spell everyone talks about like oh her W or her ultimate but her E is actually so insanely broken and the mm -hmm. trading like the instant trading with her passive yeah her passive. is so crazy the, the, it's literally the, the reason why you pick Callista in the past too, right? Because they have the instant trade on the autos, but they both have that kind of trade. Exactly. So I was like, what? That's I, the only that time you sense. actually level up, uh, or you like take uh, Callista's W is when you're playing with Renata. Mm -hmm. Other than that, the spell is just useless. But when it's you're a getting donation like, of gold to the jungler, <laughs> the, the the ghoul or whatever the sentinel. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, that spell is so worthless. You'd only ever take it for the passive, and the passive was nerfed so many times. It's only good with Renata because you're getting the double proc. Yeah, I uh, I mean I I don't know. Callista also has like it's been picked twenty three times in LCK and it has a thirty percent win rate, so it's pretty bad there too. Mm -hmm. uh, even top tier teams are picking a lot. Or like T one has lost a lot of games on Callista, and they're the best okay, team. To be fair, Guma has lost a lot of games on Callista. I don't think Guma's Callista is very good. Like Guma, this like after our um, MSI again, it's not an LCK podcast, but after MSI, I think Guma's been playing like ass. Like honestly, he's been. Yeah, running it in like a third of his games. I think the combination is strong. I just don't think Callista's good enough to warrant the priority on it. I, I don't I think, think that's the issue. Should, I, don't I think, think it's you just should ever be first really pick. strong. Yeah, Renata is really strong, and I just think you don't first pick it. Like I don't, mm. I don't know why people are first picking. It's so easy to counter in draft. It's like you can build, you can do so many things that just totally screw over Callista. Like she just also like she. I feel like if you early pick Callista. And then you see the enemy team, and they actually built a draft around you. Like, isn't it just depressing? Like, mm -hmm. oh sweet, I don't <laughs> get to play the game. <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. Right. Cool. Yeah, I mean, like, right. I, there are some drafts you just have to be so so good at Callista to actually play the game in general, let alone yeah. like, carry. Like carry, do damage. Actually, like, like, oh my god, dude. Like, I was watching like Han Sama try to like get an auto in. I'm like. All right, you got two autos. Oh, you're dead. Okay, <laughs> yeah. nice, man. You got too close and you died. Like, it's just I don't know, man. Like. Calista seems pretty ass to me. 
Um, I mean, she yeah, she has a great laning phase, but like, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Just okay. laughs> when, when people initially started picking Callista, you know, I wasn't I wasn't a believer, and you know, eventually I I said, oh yeah, you know what, I'll give it a shot. And you know, I I kind of early picked, I was like B three or something like that. So I pick it, and then the next two picks were like it just instantly poppy singed. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so have fun, dude. Funny. Yeah, yeah good. Um, they pick Poppy Singe and they R five Ash eighty carry. I'm just like, yeah, well, have fun, bro. And yeah. yeah, I ended up dodging because I mean that's just not even a real game. That's unwinnable. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. Player, you wouldn't win that There's one. no game. But play. like you, you just listed three champions, right? You could list like like eighty percent of the roster, and you could still feel the same way. And just be like, yeah, oh, I mean, to cool. be fair, again, that's more solo queue. No, you're not going to see a lot of or as much Ash. You're not going to see very much Poppy jungle. Or sin- I actually could have been Poppy Top. Well, LCK's like been spamming Poppy Jungle. I think Poppy That's Jungle like is quite good. Yeah, Poppy yes. Jungle is quite I think good. That should show up I'm very off and on about it. Yeah, I think mm. Poppy Jungle is quite good right now, just because, um, well, she still pops people because she does percent health damage. So um, yeah. she's still popping people really, really, really quickly. Um, so I actually uh, want to talk about Lucian Nami. So yeah. Lucian Nami actually did not do that great uh, this mm-hmm. weekend. It actually lost quite a bit. Uh, he did get nerfed on this patch, the 2 AD and like the 20 or 30 something base damage on his Q. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if I ever like actually noticed or saw the nerf, but the fact that he immediately started doing worse was kind of like, are those related? I really can't tell, but um, I still think it's a strong combo, Lushinami. Um, I just don't think... I don't know. People like it just got banned so many times that maybe people forgot how to play it because it did feel right. like when people would get Lushinami, they would just assume they would just auto win everything maybe, and then they would just not auto win everything and mm-hmm. just lose and die. <laughs> or in some cases, like in Immortals cases, right? They just didn't do anything with it. They just got Lushinami and were like, we'll scale with it. It's like that's mm-hmm. not really what you do, with Lushinami. So. Um, I think it'd be interesting to get your guys' thoughts on Lucianami. I, I still think it's strong, definitely weaker, obviously, with nerfs. Um, but more so, execution was really terrible on it. Yeah. Yeah, I think for me, Nami is one of the enchanter supports that, like, its base, its floor is decently high because, like, just hitting W is easy and it wins trades, sure. But Nami, like, hitting the bubble and doing the things you need to do on Nami are somewhat skill dependent. So you actually have to be a Nami player. Mm-hmm. In my mind, to like warrant the pick being valuable past lane. So, any phase, anyone can win Nami in my mind. Uh, I was also going to write off Lucian Nami as just being kind of bad after seeing so many like missed opportunities with it. Then I watched Ruler like gun two people down in cold blood in lane yesterday uh, at, uh, against DRX, just like literally kill two people with just his ult. And I was like, okay, I, I, I can <laughs> sort of see it. There's, um, there's a cool yeah. build right now where you go. Your crit item mythic usually is something like Kraken, and then you just go like Sheraldia's Grudge instead of like a crit item as your second item, and you just continue going crit. And mm, that would just make yeah. your calling basically like a laser. Um, and Bit of some, a meme, I think, in my opinion, but I yeah, think Sheraldia's I've seen it work is extremely times. overrated. Yeah. I've seen it's it good. work, so it might be a meme, but it's really cool <laughs> to see. It is really cool. Is like bad? that the time when you ulti somebody and you have Nami like buff on you and you get Imperial Mandate proc and you have Gale Force and you just Gale Force E onto somebody and ulti them. It is like yeah. that is like so hard to play against. But that only happens in that one instance and you have to, <laughs> it's like a very specific scenario and you have to be ahead, right? You have to just not get one shot when you go jump in onto somebody. Yeah. And so th- it looks broken, but like I feel like it's like your auto attacks, like it's just a meme. I don't know, like you, you build it for that one. I guess one I've been instance. bamboozled by Roller. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think Lucian himself is still usable. Uh, it's just yeah. that for the longest time he's been permabanned. So it's just like when Kasten was permabanned for all of season three, and then when the, the few times you see him, like the people pick it don't necessarily even have practice on it. It feels like yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think real Lucian games. players should pick it. Like if you're like Shahu or something, if you were an eighty care player and you had a Shahu's tier playing Lucian, yeah, you should pick it. If you're a Roller, you should play it. But uh, the way people have been picking it and like not doing anything with it early game is really strange. To me. Yeah, it's and bad, I think yeah. that if you if you can't lane with Lucianami and like win with it, you should just learn something else. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, I don't know. Get yeah. an orange top play Jinx. I'm sure that'll get you right. <laughs> oh yeah. By you, what about you, Alistair? It'd be interesting to hear your thoughts on Lucianami. Um, I think Lucianami is still very strong. Um, I do think the issue, though, is it's not necessarily 
as blindable as it used to be because people have found more counters and especially stuff like ezreal karma is like the classic combo mm. um and there's also i think i think callista renata actually does pretty well into it um but i think it's not as necessarily blindable just because people have learned a lot more counterplay to it and i also do think that I, I like I said previously. I think nerfing the Lucian is not the problem. Nerfing Nami's interaction with Electrocute or just Nami's E in general is the like what is the angle you should look at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I just think that people also are kind of just out of practice on it because it's so hard to get practice on it. it mm. It's banned in scrims, I'm assuming, because it's banned everywhere in scrims. It's banned in games. When you actually get it, like you're kind of going in cold. Mm, I see. Yeah. Mm. I also did want to like elaborate on why I think Cyril doesn't Lucian is bad. His alt interacts. His alt um, actually does more damage when you buy crit. Like it has crit scaling on it, and mm. like it gives you more shots, I believe. And overall, like you're just kind of like killing your damage in the mid game, in my opinion. I think going if you need armor pen, just go LDR. And if you like, if you can't hit it, you have one maybe two dashes you also have you can throw w out so you have 60 flat movement speed added on so you can easily react to their dodges that, that's just my opinion i know a lot of people disagree with me but i just i think it's super overrated i think it's good yeah. in some like certain circumstances like against zeri for example sure but like it's definitely not an every game thing yeah. i think it's more niche than people give it credit for yeah okay yeah I, All right. yeah, I, I do think it's a bit of a meme. Yeah, that, that cool. build. Um, but yeah. Uh, I One interesting thing that I did see that we just haven't seen for some reason, but the one time we did see it, it worked. Um, it was in LPL. I saw um, Jackie Love pick Cog Lulu into Lushinami and absolutely dumpster the crap out of the lane. Mm. And I'm like, why are we seeing more of this? Cog we Lulu haven't seen Cog so Lulu broken. at all. Yeah. Dude, it's Cog so a bit of an ego busted. Yeah. It seems so Lulu is busted. In lane. Lulu's been yeah. winning a lot, too. Yep. Lulu's been winning a lot, like, in lane. I mean, I I actually have no idea, like, how well Kog'Ma scales, because whenever I see it in my game, dude, it just dumpsters lane. Like, I'm like, I thought this was a scaling pick, dude. Why is it dumpstering <laughs> all my lanes? It's because people don't know how to react to <laughs> taking damage. That's that's why Kog'Ma's good in lane. Because yeah. he just outranges you, and then people don't, like, it takes people way too long to realize, oh, this is actually hurting me. <laughs> yeah. But you can imagine Maybe 80 it. carries who played their whole life should know what to do against Kog'Ma. I don't get it. Maybe that's yeah. why it doesn't do well in scrims, so no one actually picks it. But, like, dude, when Jackie Love picked it into, like, it was, like, they early picked, like, Lucian Nami. And then Jackie Love and, um, I forget what team he's on. Is it TS? Jackie Love's on T top, right? Yeah, it's TS. And then they, they late picked, like, the Kog'Ma. And, and then I was like, ooh, hype. We'll see. I don't know how this lane matchup goes. I mean, they're both strong laners, right? But Kog'Ma obviously has that crazy scaling. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. it's just, dude, Lucian just cannot trade against the Kogma ever, right? Like, by the time he ever goes in for a dash, Kogma's already gotten like two or three autos off, and then his lethal tempo's proc'd, and then Lulu's cooldowns are coming back, and I'm just like, oh my god, this just seems unbalanced as hell. Like, yeah, the reason yeah. you don't see it so much is just because, again, you, you, the key words you said were late picked Kogma. How many times do you see a late yeah. pick AD carry? That's, That's true. true, yeah. Right? There's That's so true. much, like, emphasis on ad carry and like early draft there's so many bans and early picks it's really hard to justify saving ad carries for that late and the other thing is you can't really blind lulu because her laning phase is so bad they they if you blind lulu they just pick karma and they they just pick like karma ezreal it's like okay well yeah kind of just doomed now yeah fair right. and karma yeah. probably still works into but like it's much more sketchy Right. I mean, I agree. I, I agree with all that, but I I also saw that Jackie Love game. He literally was like running people down, like <laughs> oh, no, they were sure. running away, and he was just like from a mile away, he was just getting loose, sped up, and just chasing them down in bot lane. It, it did not absurd. look balanced. No, I, 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 I completely like, agree, bro. I played a game of I've disco. Ever seen. I, I dead ass played disco Kogma. I took Ghost Cleanse, yeah. and it was broken because Flash <laughs> just like wasn't gonna give me any value. There was no spells I needed to Flash, so I just took Ghost, mm. and they. Like the only thing I had to flash was I was cleansable. I take cleanse and ghost, and I just run people down. It's it's really stupid. Don't get me wrong. I just think like it's much more easy to shut down. Um, I guess so. They if probably you, got like, crapped on early scrims pick blind that stuff. Yeah, I guess no one's picking in scrims. I I still think it's quite good though. I think like there are opportunities to still pick it. Um, 
But yeah, we'll see. We're probably not going to see it, honestly. If, if yeah, if we, we I think we've been we've now. been saying Cog Lulu for how long now, and we haven't seen. Yeah. I think I, seen almost it a year and a half to two years. We've been saying it's giga busted, and we just never yeah. see it play. Like, a lot of things I feel like that that uh, we say is strong doesn't get played, and you know, there's probably a whole different ecosystem as far as like you know scrims the, and the all that stuff. That's true but though. Jinx, Jinx was so broken for the longest time, right? Alistar has been saying it since last year. Yeah, and it took a long time. And then it only took until the playoffs where EG was like, I guess we're committing to the style to like finally see it win, even against like T1. Yeah. So like it, now it's weak. It, it was nerfed afterwards, but like it was so strong for so long. And it's just pro players are not flexible. They don't yeah. want to take risks. And they don't want to look like the idiot who got like outlaned, right? People yeah. like to be like high CS if you're a bot laner or a top laner. And mid laners usually just AFK farm these days, yeah. but. People like to play the dominant picks that like win scrims. Like winning scrims is like unironically a win con for some pro players for some reason because yeah. they don't like, like the emotional toll of losing scrims. Even though the whole point is to learn, it's actually such nonsense to hear when you hear like these interviews with coaches who like are still in the scene or were in the scene talking about how like players would demand to like <laughs> like they, if they keep losing, they just didn't want to play against this person. I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah. But they keep if they keep losing on a certain pick, they just don't want to play it anymore in scrims. And yeah, because it's, like, it's I just want to play the stuff that wins. It's like, well, that's the stuff you always pick. So, sure, uh, I guess. all right. I well, Calista. is there uh, <laughs> is there any final thoughts that you guys want to throw in there? Uh, you know, before we wrap uh, up, don't give Wukong. Don't you, give Wukong because he's you're on red side. <laughs> yeah, don't give Wukong. Lord. Just either first pick it or. You know, on blue side or Bannon on red side, like Wukong's the most busted. Cry, he's getting nerfed. I haven't seen Senna Wukong. Yeah, so we, yeah. We, yeah, we haven't seen it much. We saw it at MSI, but yeah, we I'm surprised we haven't seen it either. I mean, dude, yeah. or a Mumu, Wukong is Senna. so busted. Um, uh -huh. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I'm excited for LCS to finally come back. It sucks to have this uh, break in between, but uh, I want to thank uh, my co-host once again for uh, always contributing their wise thoughts. So thank you, Kevin Mitchell and Alistair. But until next time, guys, enjoy your climb on the rift. Try not to be too toxic, and we'll see you all in the next episode. Peace. Peace.